Welcome to game number two. We've got Mr. X Cat out of field and Tufty Indigo, Indigo competing here with us. So, uh, NC Game Wizard, what do you, what do we have on this one? I'm seeing series, and I'm seeing a lot of resources for series. Yeah, yeah, a lot of resources, a lot of silicon, no Nomad. So, <laughs> so good luck. To, and Nomad would have been really nice this game because there's some salt that's available pretty easily. All right, Cat's gonna you found scavenger. Wow. That electronics price would be a severe disincentive for me. Um, yeah, yeah, it would be. I'm okay with that scavenger spot. That scavenger spot's got what you need to be comfortable. Silicon's not so far you can't make glass. I could see that being a good game-winning scavenger spot, considering water's really important on series. That's fair. I'm kind of sad that all of our players are ignoring the salt patch this game, because I feel like you could have maybe fit a scientist in there that would have worked reasonably well, just... Maybe even an expansive down there. You've got a lot of what you need. I, I would have liked to see it, but I do really like Kat's location. She paid an awful lot for that. I mean, 42,000 debt already. But it's yeah. important to point out that she has a high, high carbon with a cave next to it. And as a scavenger, that's not going to diminish. So those two tiles alone, I'm really surprised she went for three carbon. She 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 shouldn't have done that. Let's She's just looking it at that, for those right? electronics. Yeah, yeah but, she definitely had enough. But she she had seven carbon a second, right? Which you never see. You never see anybody have like seven carbon a second. It's just no. It's, it's always a high and a medium. Yeah. Either way, she'll be upgrading fast this game. We'll see see if she can keep enough of a lead to not let debt overwhelm her. As already pushing toward 45,000 debt B bond rating. That's going to be some high interest tick she's going to be taking early on. So she's going to have to push really fast in order to make that work. That is such a painful mutiny on the aluminum because not only is she paying to get it back, which she just did, but prior to that, it was preventing her from making as much money in the electronics and taking her further away from her upgrade to make those electronics. Yeah, yeah, that's, that is... Mutinies on aluminum in the early game are extremely powerful and often underutilized, so it's kind of nice to see players respecting that this time around. Adderfield's got enough for the upgrade. He's going to be our last player to HQ2, it looks like. And let's see. We haven't really looked at the black market too much yet. There are both holograms and spies with mules, power surges, slowdown strikes, network viruses, and mutinies available. That's That feels like a pretty powerful black market to be a scavenger this game. Yeah. I mean, Power Surge plus Slowdown Strike in particular, that's that's really nice to see. It just goes to show how much uh, Cat really didn't need that third elemental quarry that she could have gotten a hold of two mules. <laughs> she just got true. carbon through that if she really felt like she didn't have enough. All right, Cat going after Ice this game. That's a little bit odd for a scavenger on series in particular, but there isn't great water near her. The big advantage of scavengers over everybody else on series is no diminishing resources. So you'll often see Actually, other players. Yeah, you want so you want those highs and you want the mediums because they're going to be amazing for you all game. And oftentimes you'll see other factions be the factions that move into the ice as ice will yes. never diminish and provides a respectable amount of water as long as the sun is out. It's also nuke proof, which is not important in this game, but just as a general note to our players. Yeah, yeah. Also nuke proof. That's that is sometimes quite valuable, especially on series, where nukes are all the more powerful because of the limited number of resources. Nuclear Plant Online, for people who aren't as familiar with Offworld and especially series, Nuclear Plant was a building that was added in the series initiative. I mean series itself was added. Uranium is also on this map. Not a whole lot of it, but it does exist. And those nuclear plants convert uranium and water into a hefty amount of power, so not too surprising to see Adderfield moving into them early. They're quite expensive, but he's using his half-steel prices as the expansive faction to have them be a little bit cheaper, and he'll be looking to pay off his debt and start making money off those very rapidly. Yeah. Cat, I think, is looking at liquid batteries? Yeah. yeah I mean, I figured... Yeah, why not? Figured it had to be when the patent lab was coming out, and indeed, um, I don't know how I feel about it. As you can see, water... Already, she has a decent stockpile. We can and start it's there. cheap, yeah. And other players have claims in spades in water. Just expansive even has uh, a high and a medium and a low, which she's currently making electronics on, which could at any moment pretty much destroy the water market as it needed to stand, uh, unless you get significantly more 
water production, you know, electrolysis reactors, farms online, maybe those nuclear plants, but those don't consume very much water at all. Yeah. So, yeah, just in general, I don't know if liquid batteries is a strong choice here, but it'll be See, good late game. I'll be a bit more aggressive and say the more I stare at that, the more I hate it. I, I really hate that. Uh, I mm. So my big concern about Kat this game, and she's already in C debt, 94,000 uh, debt right now, right? My right. big concern about Kat was that I thought she needed to get the ball rolling fast. She needed to move quick. She needed to get through upgrades as fast as possible in order to keep that bond rating acceptable and potentially just rocket ahead of everybody else because she was set up in a position to do it. And going after a patent lab, going after liquid batteries, liquid batteries provides almost no benefits right now. And it's costing yeah. money right now. It costs money to get the patent lab up. It costs money to get the chems together to get that done. And it's just, you're nanotech. just slowing yourself down so much. So I, I hate nanotech. nanotech. I hate nanotech. I hate that too. I hate everything yeah. Kat's doing right now. I'm going to go look at Adderfield. A lot of the time, I would be in love with nanotech. Ooh. Because nanotech is one of my favorite patents. Uh, oh, I it's love basically it. a gimme. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And in this case, uh, we see it's a little bit better now that the electrolysis reactors are coming down because it's a little bit chewed through what Kat had, but she had a thousand carbon. Yeah. And what nanotech's going to do for her is it's going to let her turn her buildings back into those resources that were required to build them. That means she's got a little bit of glass in these farms, a little bit of glass that she's not getting out of in these solar condensers because of the fact she just went into liquid batteries. So that's a long term thing. So basically, we're in a spot where she doesn't really gain anything. So she's got that high that's really easy to transition into a double high with that cave. Yeah, I yeah. I, I don't understand the nanotech decision at all. It keeps nanotech from all the rest of your players, but steals at $27 right now. And it's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't really agree with the nanotech play either, but you know, that said, Kat is up at HQ5 because she's been successfully making enough money on these reactors and these farms. Nobody else aggressively moving into those resources. And that's costing them absurd amounts of money right now. Adderfield only recently getting his farm triangle online and just now trying to move into the electrolysis so cat even if i don't like some of the overall strategy that we're seeing from cat she's at least in the right markets at the right times and sometimes that can be enough to get you there yeah yeah it's definitely looking like a very cat centric game i'll just put it that way yeah no yeah. a lot of what cat's doing is driving the commentary and of driving the uh <laughs> the match basically just put it that way. <laughs> it's true. That said, Mr. X, once again in a patent lab, he is after teleportation, which I guess I don't mind too much as, well, this happened with this aluminum mine all the way across the map, which is costing him $125 in fuel a second. So at least that's going to stop <laughs> in a moment here. Oh. Also, after thinking machines, he actually had a huge number of patents queued up, and that's a dangerous thing to do. Not something I would ever recommend, because... When you've got all those patents queued up, yeah, you've kind of set them and you can forget about your patent lab for a little while, but you're not using those resources to upgrade or buy black market items or just continue to invest. They're just sitting there. All those resources that he has in slant drilling right now are sitting around doing absolutely nothing, which is the worst thing you could possibly do with your money. There, there might be a brief situation where if, if chems are just so cheap, you know, that $60, $70 a unit magic zone where mm -hmm. you can just sell 100 or something and buy 100 chems, then maybe maybe queue up some patents. But yeah. otherwise, probably not worthwhile to have your money sitting like that. Unless you expect the chem price is going to do exactly what it's doing right now, which is <laughs> yeah. shorting. Yeah, yeah. So you could, for example, cancel out of slant drilling and suddenly sitting on 80 spare chemicals that now cost almost $300 a piece doesn't doesn't look nearly as bad. Just doesn't. Ooh, all right. Upgrade to four for Mr. X. Adderfield running a little bit behind on the upgrades. I think he's just playing scared, honestly, because Cat has a lot of cash on hand right now, and upgrading is looking pretty dangerous without having a large stockpile of money set aside for yourself. Yeah, if I was in Adderfield's spot, uh, I would be thinking it's at least a coin flip if I upgrade right now, mm -hmm. uh, whether she goes for X or me. Yeah. Both expansives, he's a little bit cheaper, so it's probably a coin flip in my favor, even. I mean, I would take it if I were Adderfield, just because you're HQ3 against HQ5. This is a free-for-all game. You have to take some risks to pull back into it after you've fallen this far behind. 
And so ah. every second that goes by where Adderfield isn't upgrading, yes, he's not taking that risk. It's reducing the chance that he loses the game immediately, but it is definitely increasing the chance that he loses the game long term. So let's talk about diminishing resources and what it means for Adderfield's steel mill. He took a single high, if I'm not mistaken, and as an expansive, you really need to put two claims into iron. You just do, because it's going to go away, and you're going to need that steel later in the game, mm -hmm. and it's not going to be there. And right now, he's in a spot where he can't make enough iron to have it be profitable to run his steel mills. Yeah, which is definitely hugely problematic. Iron is so ridiculously expensive. I don't really like the iron that he selected, even if it is a high iron or was a high iron at the start of the game. I want to point out, there was a medium iron next to a medium uranium right here. That can be very valuable just to have. There was also, yes. next to his aluminum, a couple of iron tiles. And so if you're going to move into a bunch of iron anyway, you can pretty easily get a lot of adjacency stacked up early in the game and have that Might really have help out long term. That cave? Yeah, oh. maybe, maybe. And the cave is still there, but it's just caves aren't as interesting. Not for the expansive player. For the expansive player. Iron. Yeah. Not really what you're after. Slant drilling picked up by Mr. X. Definitely don't mind that. It's going to give him, well, nothing for the moment as his water and silicon all got frozen out. But I'll feel pretty comfortable with his resources long term this game. So let's look at Tufty for a brief second, because he might only... Well, I guess Mr. X is let's going... Look at Mr. For X for a brief game. second, because that's how long he has yes. left in this game. <laughs> that's... Yes. No. <laughs> that really would have been a much smarter way to go about it. But uh, Tufty, down in the crater. Obviously, Mr. X didn't secure his stock. That's just the way that goes in Free For All. Yep. Uh, and we talked about taking risks. He, he took a risk when upgrading to 4. He took a much bigger risk when he continued to pick up patents after that upgrade, as it meant yes. that he suddenly, his patents were absurdly expensive, and he did not have the cash on hand to be doing that nonsense. Adderfield and Cat both going to jump on him and punish him for that decision. It's an interesting move from Adderfield, though, because it means he thinks he's going to get more of a benefit out of this than Cat is, and he's still an HQ behind. They've ended up even on Cat the split That is in a massive here. amount of debt. Yeah, that's that's the big thing. Is cat has a lot of debt, hundred and fifty thousand. So if you can keep cat from making power, which would require starting to stockpile black market right about this second, yeah, uh, you could probably you could probably contest this. Yeah, Adderfield really does need to make a black market purchase right now. He's got a hundred thousand in the bank. There are black market items here that are extremely powerful and only cost six k a piece. You need to be using that cooldown constantly because whenever you make that black market purchase. It's going to be another minute before you're allowed to make another one, and you don't have to use the item right away. So whenever you see something powerful sitting around, and it doesn't cost all that much, you want to use that cooldown so you've got it when you need it later on. So Tufty sitting on a pair of lows um, down in a crater, and it's one of the smaller craters that I've seen. Yeah. Never a good spot for your HQ to be in uh, as a scavenger. He's kind of playing like a scientist, building glass on his silicon, which, I mean might prefer to see his claims used a little bit differently a little less water maybe a silicon claim on the high and just make your glass at home i don't know that electrolysis reactor not doing anything for him but just in general behind because of the fact that he over invested in things like aluminum when it wasn't going to pay out and he just under invested in hq location yeah he I, I did not like tufty's location when he founded it we didn't really talk about it too much because cat had the outlier found of founding extremely early with a massive amount of debt but tufty as you say in a small crater he could have pretty easily just been outside that crater a little bit uh, maybe a little bit to the south closer to his aluminum and then shipped in the carbon so that he's got a little more space next to him and that would mean he didn't have to do these things like having farms and glass kilns disconnected from his headquarters which really slows down your economy drastically long term this would be my thinking for tufty just ignore everyone else. You mm -hmm. don't need to be where they are. Go to the northwest corner, and you can see he's got better carbon than yeah. he's currently got right there. He's got water and aluminum he could be founded on. So the shipping would be a little bit painful for the carbon, but he could be making fuel to make up for that fact. And there's silicon over there. That's so true. it's pretty much a smorgasbord for a, a scavenger. That's everything they need. And even if he was in the crater because he wanted to be adjacent to the carbon, well, it's a much bigger crater, so that's way more acceptable at that point. 
It's a it's a bigger, nicer crater. Yeah, it's just a nicer crater to be in. It's fine. Roomier, more elbow it. room. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's important for your scavenger players, as it turns out. Man, food's gone absolutely insane in this game. Put down yeah. more farms. <laughs> just... that, but that pair of farms not really cutting it. Yeah, and that's that's the thing is these players are relying on pairs of farms, which I hate so much more than anybody else in this entire community hates. Now, Cat has her farms at least well upgraded, but I want to point out that the thing about food is it's a life support resource. So yes. <laughs> you're consuming it constantly. So even though it looks like Hacker Ray Auction really should go for something. All right, Cat's going to bid on it. Even though it looks like Cat is making $1,100 a second from these farms, she's really only making about half of that because half of it is being eaten up and sent to go and combat her debt. Automatically. One There's thing, nothing she can do about it. One thing that's favorable in Kat's uh, corner, and she is making a lot of money in every industry that she in. It's very hard for me to point at something on Kat's HQ and say it shouldn't have that. The liquid batteries that she went into has, at this point, kind of paid off in spades. You can see the way water is just yo-yoing back and forth, and she's just, I, I can go into more farms, but I don't need to because I'm making $205, $242 a second on just this water 24 hours a day. So... In a way, Kat has equalized her problems. The market has definitely swung her way. That was also an extremely important pickup for Kat. Tufty was falling down on debt. Adderfield kind of tried to get in there. He got three stocks purchased up, but he just did not have the money to compete with Kat when it came to that final purchase. And that all circles way back around to black market usage this game. Kat had slowed Adderfield down with a power surge. That gave her enough time that uh, she was able to make up a large sum of money, get the purchase completely onto Tufty. That gives her two additional claims and a much bigger stock price boost, which she desperately needed, than Adderfield received from Tufty. And we've got an extremely similar, kind of even game headed into the final stages here. Cat with maybe a slight edge with those patent pickups in particular. She's got four of them. And uh, the extra claims from Tufty in particular off that uh, large purchase. Cat with some really, really nice optimizations. I can't that's point to a single too. thing that Cat has optimized here that's not advantageous. Yeah, and that's something Adderfield has not had working this entire time. And on series, that's a pretty significant disadvantage. And that's maybe why we see Cat buying into her own stock for the time being. She knows she has this advantage in upgrades. She just wants this game to go on longer because she's better upgraded. She has better tech. So the longer the game goes on, the better it's going to be, yeah. When you just compare stock for stock, I'm decently sure Cat's in the lead. It might only be by a little bit. It's split pretty evenly, but she does have those extra two claims. It, it's all going to work out in Cat's favor, I think. Yeah. I really do. Adderfield also moving a bit slowly here. He's got a huge amount of cash stored away in his electronics right now that he could be using to do things like buying up his own stock, having tried to purchase up cat stock. But as he's failing to do this, it gets less and less likely that he has a, any shot of winning this game at all. And cat paying attention to the stock market, knowing where all of her money is, has put her in a very good position. She only needs how oh, about 350,000 more dollars to clean us up at her field. Meanwhile, he's looking about 600,000 short from here. So things are looking very, very good for cat. Indeed, she should be able to win this one in a matter of minutes if nothing goes terribly wrong she's gonna sell out of her own stock to get it done little bit risky when your opponent has that much of a cash advantage on you little i mean yes well you're getting rid of the double price problem i mean they they pick it up for sixty thousand instead of one hundred twenty thousand. so for starters there's that but i don't think it's gonna be a huge problem for cat this game but just it's something to think about when your opponent is, you know, a couple hundred thousand over you, that maybe you're closing it up a little more than you should. Yeah, maybe maybe you're making it a little dangerous, but we do use time for tiebreakers here, and so if you're willing to take that, that little bit of a risk, then yeah. it, can, it can pan out for you very well. Cat's going to go ahead and get to the purchase, sold 19, 8, 20, left in the clock. That's about average. Sum this one up in a sentence for Cat. It would be panned out very well. Oh yeah, that, that worked out well for her. <laughs> she got it done. Really? Sp she yes, starting at B. <laughs> she, she took that huge. Ended at D. <laughs> it's true. So, it's true. I think that if she had had a little bit more competition for the life support resources, in particular early on, that could have been very very dangerous for her. 
if maybe players have been a bit more aggressive on black market. I'm going to pull up our charts and graphs here. Uh, I'm just looking at prices, and I could see that they, they definitely ignored slowdown strikes potential. Yeah. Considering the, the way the goon squads get bought up in these competitive games, it's it's always good to have a couple slowdown strikes for if you just don't know. You know, there's spies available, but they're not always around. Yeah. So, big, big things from this game. Yeah, all of the other players' black market items together did not equal the number of purchases that Cat made. Given that Cat was in D-debt for a significant period of time and she was oh. locked out of the black market, that's problematic. Hey. That's what we were talking about earlier, right? You got to use those things as they're on cooldown. Yeah. It can be hard. Uh, a big part of founding is seeing, all right, so what's the cheap upgrade? But another big part of founding is, okay, so where's my first goon squad? You know, where's that yeah. first power surge? Where am I getting three grand on the market or two grand as it would be in a free-for-all circumstance? Yeah, where, where are you going to get that cash? How are you going to use it? What's the best way? Those early decisions can make a really big difference. I want to say that you can consistently get into the black market in like 90% of games. Yeah, yeah, I would say that's true. There's just enough money there most of the time. Prices have to start out pretty depressed in order yeah. to make not using the black market the correct decision. Yeah. Which Let's everybody see. hates those things. Another big <laughs> thing that happened in the black market this game, which isn't on our list here because it was an auction, was the underground nuke. So Tufty picked up the nuke on the auction. He got it for like 10, which felt pretty cheap to me. But then he threw it on a high water tile, which I really hated. In the moment, <laughs> it it damaged Adderfield in the moment, but Adderfield I don't think was the target to be concerned about, right? You wanted to be concerned about Cat. If you keep her from upgrading super quickly, then you can potentially take her down. Spies were on the board. And so you eventually and network viruses. And network viruses. So hitting that carbon not exactly. out of the question. Exactly. That high carbon tile, knock it down to a low, and you're leaving Cat on low carbons for the rest of the game, that that would have felt pretty good. Just thought that would have yeah. felt pretty good. It can be difficult when you just get the one nuke on the auction that you weren't expecting to be able to most effectively use it, especially on a tiles like uh, like where Cat knew it was vulnerable, so she added Goon. It can be it can be difficult to justify the debt and time investment for the network virus to just knock through this one tile when your opponent's got, you know, potentially uh, the three lows, of course, and there's a there's a fourth low, and then there's got a nuclear plant on a fifth low, and uh, it's hard. It is hard. It's, it's a tough game to find the precise spot for the single nuke, <laughs> especially with silicon so available and mules on the map. It's, uh, it's tough. I will agree with that. It's a hard game indeed.